Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is a galaxy known as Malin 1. This is one of the stranger galaxies discovered back in 1986. And in this particular simulation I actually had to increase its brightness quite dramatically, because in reality it is very very difficult to see. Which is why it took so long for the scientists to discover this galaxy. It's a type of a galaxy known as LSBG, or Low Surface Brightness Galaxy. In other words, it's something that we could also refer to as the shadow galaxy. And in a very recent study, scientists have just discovered approximately 21,000 more of these very mysterious shadow galaxies that seem to be actually hiding everywhere. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Naming your paper Shadows in the Dark is definitely going to attract attention. And they're not even exaggerating, because what they've discovered is almost impossible to see. It's these shadow galaxies that seem to be present pretty much everywhere around us, but are practically impossible to detect because they don't produce very much light. Some of them don't produce any light at all. And in every single picture that you see right here, that's basically at least one of these galaxies somewhere in there that they discovered. And although you can kind of see the outline of some of these shadow galaxies or LSBGs, for some it's still practically impossible for human eye to see anything. But the so-called Malin 1 that you see right here was the original LSBG and it actually still even today the largest, at least by size, spiral galaxy we've discovered. At a distance of about 1 billion light years away from us, the only reason we were able to see this galaxy is actually because it's also very very large, so the light that it does produce is visible from a relatively far away distance. But what exactly are these mysterious galaxies and why are they pretty much everywhere but we can't really see them? Well, as the name implies, they don't produce a lot of surface brightness. For most of them, we really have to kind of magnify the light quite dramatically to make them stand out and to make them visible. By definition, to be a shadow galaxy or to be an LSBG, the brightness of this galaxy has to be actually dimmer than the night light itself. In other words, all of these galaxies kind of blend into the darkness of the night and are practically impossible to see because they don't possess a lot of stars on the inside, they don't produce any supernova, and all of their gas is in neutral hydrogen form, which means that they don't also have any gas nebula or any other very obvious objects that can produce a lot of light that would make them more visible. So they're practically the definition of darkness itself. But they're still there and they still contain quite large masses. And although some of them do possess a few stars, for the most part most of their matter, most of the actual physical matter is either hydrogen gas or in the form of very ancient very dim stars that survived for billions of years. Also, most of these galaxies are usually dwarf galaxies, but they still contain quite large masses as well, mostly due to the mysterious dark matter that seems to represent at least 95% of the entire mass of these galaxies. Which is why scientists who study dark matter are always very fascinated in trying to discover more of these unusual galaxies out there. But because they do still possess a little bit of luminous matter, so basically a few stars and some gas that can actually emit light, we're still able to see them to some extent, which is how the scientists behind this paper were able to discover close to 21,000 new shadow galaxies out there. By using the very extensive data from the so-called Dark Energy Survey, which was the survey that tried to look for the explanation to the dark energy, they were able to use their model to then produce all of this new data that was actually there already, but hasn't been analyzed that extensively. And although this particular survey has only looked at approximately 4% of the night skies, even in these 4% they were able to discover close to 21,000 galaxies near us. With pretty much every single dot here being a galaxy they've discovered. But because these galaxies are so extremely difficult to study, simply because they're basically invisible to us, they have always been underrepresented in various galactic surveys. So essentially we're looking at various galaxies, but we're just not seeing the shadow galaxies mostly because by nature they're difficult to see. Yet there are quite a lot of them out there and they're also very different from any other galaxy we've seen um, and are familiar with. So for example, for many of these shadow galaxies, their center does not have the so-called bulge. They don't seem to have a higher density of stars in the middle and are instead more or less equal when it comes to star distribution. However, they do have higher densities of the mysterious dark matter in the middle, which is how they're probably held together. 
At the same time, for the most part, all of these galaxies are usually completely alone. They're isolated from everything else and don't have any neighbors, which is probably why they become like this. In other words, their origin can kind of be explained by their loneliness, by their isolation. Without having any neighbors to collide with or to interact with, they don't get to experience the star formation anymore and all of their gas becomes neutral over time and everything essentially just becomes invisible. And all of this is due to their isolation from everything else. It's very unlikely that there's anything else going on here. It's simply just the fact that without any activity, without interaction with other nearby galaxies, every galaxy is going to become the so-called shadow galaxy. But what's really unusual is that the spiral galaxies that become shadow galaxies are also some of the most massive and largest in size spiral galaxies we've ever seen. In other words, the shadow galaxies seem to suggest that a lot of very massive, very large spiral galaxies do eventually become shadow galaxies if they don't get any interaction from anything else. And this is of course maybe the fate of the Milky Way after it undergoes all of the collisions with nearby galaxies as well. In other words, the ultimate fate of all of these galaxies that do undergo collisions might be to become a shadow galaxy after a few billion years when everything cools down and when everything stops interacting. So what we're looking at here maybe is the future of the Milky Way after about 10 to 15 billion years. Which is of course interesting because these galaxies seem to have stopped interacting billions of years ago when the universe was still young. Which means that something probably kicked them out when they were already quite massive or, strangely enough, somehow these galaxies manage to acquire a lot of mass very quickly and become really massive and then quiet within only a few billion years of the existence of the universe. But all of these new discoveries from the last few years suggest that the presence of these shadow galaxies might explain where a lot of the missing mass is. So basically, a lot of the mass that we expect there to be in the universe could be actually hidden inside of these shadow galaxies and we're just not seeing them because, by nature, they're invisible. And the current estimates suggest that at least 15% of all of the galaxies in the universe are shadow galaxies. But that's the lower estimate. There might be a lot more of them, some of them being completely invisible because they're just pure dark matter, and we're just not really seeing them because we don't really have good ways of detecting dark matter just yet. But just as there are different types of normal galaxies or visible galaxies, there seem to be also different types of shadow galaxies. And in this paper, the scientists were able to already distinguish the so-called blue LSBGs and red LSBGs. In other words, slightly bluish galaxies and slightly reddish galaxies. Usually the blue color comes from much larger, much more massive and much more active stars, whereas the red color comes from the much older and also much less massive stars. But they don't just differ in color, they also differ in the way that they interact with one another. For example, many of these blue galaxies seem to be distributed relatively equally and they don't have any preference for being with anything or close to anything. Whereas the red galaxies do seem to have a slight preference for being chunked together. Not close enough to interact with one another, but close enough to be in the proximity of other similar galaxies. And that's of course a mystery that we can't really answer right now. Although I'm sure with time, as we analyze these galaxies in more detail, the scientists will discover even more properties that we can add to the description of these so-called shadow galaxies. Right now, they've only got to analyze the distance to some of these uh, objects, and they are relatively close to us. Many of them are anywhere from 100 to 500 million light years away from us, some of them are even much closer. And some, more invisible ones, could also be hiding on our doorsteps. We already had a few different theories about these so-called dark matter galaxies, and we've even discovered at least a couple nearby, but now there seem to be even more indication to suggest that these galaxies are a lot more common in the vicinity of Milky Way galaxy than we previously assumed. In other words, there could be hundreds or even thousands of these invisible shadow galaxies orbiting our own Milky Way. Although unfortunately we don't really know much else about them, simply because we don't have any good means of studying these galaxies just yet. Once we find a way to actually see the shadows of these galaxies, the dark matter itself, we might be able to discover what's going on here. For now, unfortunately, there's nothing else we can do, but I guess count them and try to find out if there are any more of these unusual objects closer to us where we can actually see some stars. So until we discover more about these shadow galaxies, that's unfortunately it. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe support this channel on Patreon and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.